Hello there folks and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we talk about men's style, grooming, self-development and in fact anything that will help you on your journey to Chap Nirvana. Now today is one which I've, I should have done a little earlier in the year really but time has passed by and this one is all about the summer essentials for the stylishly dressed chap. And it's a bit of a moot point, you know, because I'm British, I live in, in England, and although I love living in this country, the seasons are not always as they should be. We often have poor summers, bad winters, you know, and, and perhaps stylishly dressing in hot climates is not something which is appropriate all the time in England. However, as I film this, it's early August, which typically is the peak of our summertime. And today I'm bathed in beautiful summer sunshine. So I'm going to take this opportunity to give you my 13 top tips that I recommend to keep you stylishly dressed in the summertime. Let's start at the top and work our way down. And of course, at the top comes the hat. Now, the hat is something which is highly useful for a number of reasons. First of all, it keeps that awful ultraviolet light off the top of your head. If you happen to be stylishly without hair, such as myself, or if you're unfortunate and you have a full head of hair, um, a hat is always the ideal companion for a hot summer's day. It stops the sun beating down on you. It actually looks rather stylish as well. And if you treat yourself to a nice either straw hat, or this one's actually made of uh, reconstructed paper, it's quite handy. You can, you can sort of mash it down to stick it in your bag if you're you know, flying or something like that. And it still looks lovely, stylish, keeps the sun off your head, the sun out of your eyes, and it's just that excellent companion for those hot summer's days. So my second tip is an unlined or unstructured jacket. And that's for those slightly more formal occasions in the summer. You find yourself on holiday and somebody invites you to a barbecue and you realize it's gonna be a little bit more formal than just jeans and a t-shirt or shorts and a t-shirt. And you lack something with a little bit more formality, but you know, crosses the boundary between formal and informal. And for me, an unlined or unstructured jacket is the perfect way to go. What do I mean by unlined, unstructured? This is a good example here. This is, uh, let's have a look, what brand is this? This is, uh, I think it's a Tommy Hilfiger jacket. And as you can see, it's totally unlined. So you have the minimum amount of material against your skin, so you don't overheat, yet it just gives you that edge if you go to an event where simply wearing a t-shirt and shorts is not going to be formal enough. So my next tip is probably the one which nobody will you know will have missed off already and it's sunglasses because let's be honest everybody looks a little cooler in sunglasses they perform the most fantastic function they keep the sun out of your eyes they also protect you from ultraviolet light so it's an excellent uh, addition to your stylish collection. Now you know, choosing the appropriate shape of glasses for your face is the tricky bit, really. Um, for me, I tend to go with aviator glasses because they tend to fit most people's facial types. Or, just reach down here, I'm also a big fan of the Clubmaster type because, again, tends to be a little more comfortable and it'll go with pretty much everything that you wear, formal, informal. And, you know, you can find them just about everywhere. The secret is try a few on, get some second opinions from those who love you uh, so that you don't end up looking, you know, like a, a bit of a, a fool with glasses that don't really suit you, that you're going to invest a lot of money in. But go for the classics and you won't go far wrong. Now, my next tip is a linen shirt because linen is that perfect cooling material which is just great to have next to your skin on the hottest of days yet it still is something in a shirt form that has an element of formality so if you're not somebody who's comfortable just you know dressing in the the most casual of clothes a linen shirt is a great way to go that just bridges that that gap between being smart yet coping with a hot hot climate so linen always good doesn't matter if it gets a bit crumpled or wrinkled because that's kind of the look of linen anyway but a linen shirt a go-to garment for those hot summer days now when we're working our way down the body let's stick at the torso for a while we've done the linen shirt 
a polo shirt is also a great idea. Now I love polo shirts because they've just got a little bit more of an edge of classic style than a t-shirt uh, and the polo of course originates from India where people used to play polo. It has that lovely brushed cotton material typically that it's made of which gives an element of texture to what you're wearing. A whole host of different colours can be chosen as well just to bolster your style but just that step more formal than a t-shirt and it's something which I is my go-to shirt normally when I'm wearing shorts. A great classic combo. Now my next tip is the one I'm wearing now and that's a nice floral shirt. Why should Thomas Magnum have all the fun in the Hawaiian shirt selection. Now I love floral shirts because they're quite fun. They also, again, breach the boundary between very informal and formal. I would happily wear this to a, a gathering, a barbecue, and I've got a number of different floral shirts which come out at this time of year when they're entirely appropriate and you know they just really look the part. To be honest, there's only a short window of time that you can wear these in the year. You'd look a bit of a fool if you wore it out outside of the summer season. But again, nice and cooling. You can wear it open collared. You can have button down collar as well. Go for the selection that suits you the best. They pair fantastically with shorts and they cross that boundary between the informal and the timelessly classic. Now, of course, in the summertime, us gentlemen don't have much opportunity to wear accessories or jewellery particularly. Not that we do anyway, or I certainly don't, but um, you know, in the summertime your opportunities to accessorise your clothes actually diminish enormously because you know, what can you wear? You're wearing a shirt and shorts generally. So those little accessories, which probably are there all the year, become heightened in their importance to the way you dress in the summertime. Now for me, I've, I actually wear very few accessories normally. One of the things I do always have on is a wristwatch and in the summertime you have to be more thoughtful than ever I think about what you wear. Dress watches with leather straps because you know the summer hot weather sweating can cause those leather straps to absorb that sweat. Uh, it reduces their lifespan, particularly if they're expensive, and you know they get a bit stinky as well. I always choose to wear a watch which has a metal bracelet in the summertime or a NATO strap because they tend to be a bit more resilient. Now particularly if you're going on holiday and you're likely to go in the pool, I always tend to wear a dive watch in the summer because I know I don't have to leave it in the safe in the hotel room. It's going to be tough enough to go in the pool and you know it's not going to absorb any sweat because the bracelet is made of steel so think about the watch that you wear choose well there are some fantastic watches made by Seiko and Orient and other brands which really just hit the mark when it comes to that accessory which is just going to make you stand out from the crowd now as we move down the body my next tip is the chino trousers. Now I wear chinos all the year round because I think they're just a, a classic alternative to denim and I just really love chino. I think it goes well with many many different types of clothing but in the summertime particularly when you wear a lighter color chino like a khaki which is my go-to color it really does have you covered for the whole host of occasions. You can wear the khaki chino with a, a, a navy blazer with your unlined unstructured jacket or you can wear it with your floral shirt it's just that you know Swiss army knife of trousers really which is the go-to for pretty much any event that you're going to that shorts are not going to be appropriate for so the chino great pair of trousers for summer particularly when you look at the vast range of colors at your disposal especially those pastel colors which lend themselves well for these hot summer days Now when we're below the waist, we've just done the chino trouser, let's talk about the shorts because that's what most of us chaps tend to wear in those summer months. And I know I certainly do, and I am right now. But choose carefully when it comes to your shorts because you know a lot of people you see heading towards the cargo short look, multiple pockets, and they have a very functional look. They are very functional. You know, they're great to wear if you're doing something where you need to store things in your trousers, but for that slightly more timeless, elegant and streamlined look, they do tend to be, bug be a bit bulky, they do tend to be a bit long. For me, a classic man short should uh, end no more than an inch or two above the knee. If the shorts you're wearing goes below the knee, 
they're not really shorts, they're something else. So for me, an inch or two above the knee is where the short should be. Typically, if I'm looking for a classic pair of shorts that I know is gonna go with everything, something like a navy or a khaki chino short, you know you've pretty much got it covered. Now in the daytime, knocking around, you know, I often do wear a pair of cargo shorts. It's actually what I'm wearing right now. But, you know, if I'm looking to create an impression, the chino short is my absolute number one choice for uh, keeping cool, but looking smart. So as we move down the body, it's time to talk about what we wear on our feet, because it's an important choice we have to make. Do we wear flip-flops? Well, I would say no, unless you're going to the pool, because I'll be honest, nobody really wants to see a man's feet. And, uh, you know, flip-flops, purely around water for me. So I always like to wear something which has a bit more classic elegance about it, which covers the foot. And there's a couple of choices which tend I tend to head down. Firstly, if I'm wearing trousers, I like the look of the classic desert boot. Now I've done a video before on the Clark's original desert boot, and I don't think that style, which has been around since the Second World War, has really been bettered when it comes to a classic foot covering for gentlemen. It can be worn with long trousers, and in fact, if you're bold enough, you can wear them with shorts. Originally, when they were worn by British soldiers in the Western Desert during the Second World War, they would absolutely have been worn with short trousers. So, why not wear them with shorts now? It might be a step too far for you though, but the desert boot is an absolute perfect choice for your chino trousers or your shorts. Now, when it comes to what you wear on your feet in informal times if you're just wearing shorts well you've a few options to go down for me i always like to choose the classic white leather trainer or sneaker depending on where in the world you're watching this but uh, for me i call it a training shoe and this is the adidas continental 80. now this is just about as classic as you can get when it comes to a men's sneaker uh, all white leather comes in different colors as well if you like a bit of color to it but i think these are extremely you know I wouldn't say elegant, but they bridge that gap between looking a little bit too formal and looking a little bit informal. So I think the classic white training shoe is a go-to for, you know, the occasions where perhaps you're going to be on your feet all day and you want something which is comfortable, which looks summery. It looks stylish. They're easily maintained, you know, because it's leather. They're likely to last you years and years. They're not horrifically expensive. I think these are, you know, in the region of 80 pounds. So a, a classic uh, Adidas Continental 80. I'm going to do a review video on this after the season, after I've put it through a full year of effort uh, and work. But yes, this is my go-to training shoe for hot summer's days where I'm going to be walking, yet I still want to look cool. Now, following on from the white leather training shoe is how are you gonna wear it? Because that's a big question you have to ask as well. And a top tip for me is wear it without socks. Now, that doesn't mean without socks, because if you wear training shoes for any length of time without socks, barefoot, you're very soon gonna have a stinky mess. And anybody who sits near you is not gonna be very appreciative of the odors that you bring. Obviously, your foot's gonna sweat. The sweat is not going to uh, be able to escape and soon bacteria will build up and you'll have a malodorous pair of shoes which won't last very long and you, you know, it, 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 quite frankly, it'll stink badly. So the way to get around that is of course to wear the no-show sock. Very inexpensive, you can buy them in quite large packs and you know, they, they just pop over your foot and they give you the appearance of wearing those trainers without socks but your foot is protected, the perspiration is absorbed, and it will significantly enhance the lifespan of your training shoe and also the friendship of people who are in your close proximity. So the no-show sock, worth an investment. And finally, the thing which I wouldn't go without in the summertime is my summertime fragrance of choice, a signature fragrance for the hot times of year. Now for me, I like fragrances at this time of year which are toned down, quite muted, quite citrusy quite often for me. I do enjoy the, the citrus family of fragrances, aromatic citrus, and I really enjoy things like 4711, which is a light, subtle fragrance, and I like other citrus toned fragrances which I know are not going to be muggy 
overwhelming. They're not going to be very heavy if I'm in close proximity to people. They're not going to be too sickly. So fragrances which are in tune to this time of year. Most often I tend to wear eau de colognes and at the very most an eau de toilette in the summer months. I res reserve the eau de parfums to the winter where I think the, the damper, colder climate suppresses the fragrance and I tend to wear much stronger fragrances. But in the summertime, light, zesty fragrances always lift the mood and make you feel fresher and a lot more clean. Well, there we go. Those were my 13 tips actually to help keep you stylish, sharp, looking good in the summertime. Just because we have to remove layers of our clothes during these summer months doesn't mean to say that we can't pay attention to the detail, look, smell and behave our very best at this time of year. So I hope you've enjoyed learning of my top 13 picks, the things that I wouldn't go without in these hot, glorious summer months. Because let's be honest, the winter will soon be upon us. Time to start putting on the layers again. Let's embrace the heat while it's with us. So if you have enjoyed my tips today, please give me a thumbs up. And of course, as ever, I would encourage you to join us here at the Chaps Guide by clicking that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our future material. And please engage with me in the comment section below. I love to interact with you and hear what tips I've missed out that you think are the perfect selections for the summer. So until the next time, until we meet again, Please take care, look after yourselves and your families, and we'll see each other very soon.